you own Starry Night 8 and you would like to insert a horizon that is exactly the same as at your place. Well, to do that, that should be very easy and intuitive, shouldn't it? But as it isn't, this is the video how I tell you how to do it. Hi, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So, grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. Now, I recently discovered a video on YouTube that's called Create and Use a Horizon File in Mina, Stellarium and Cartesian. It's from Patriot Astro from Chad, one of my favorite YouTubers. Now, I immediately followed all his instructions and entered it in Mina and it worked like a charm. So, now I obviously want to do the same in Starry Night 8 because it's really great to know when you actually plan your shooting sessions where your view is actually obstructed. Now why you would assume that with such an expensive software as Starry 9.8 it should be at least as easy as with the free software as Nina, it isn't at all. Actually that you enter a file with horizon data is not foreseen at all in Starry 9.8. That doesn't mean it cannot be done, but it is a hassle. Now I will show you now how on my PC and I will also provide an Excel file to you, which will help you with that, and I put that in the description. But before we do that, please go to the mentioned video of Patriot Astro and follow his instruction as long until you have in Excel two columns, one with the altitude and one with the azimuth, and we will take it from there. I'll be waiting here until you're ready. So I assume you have gone out through the video of chat and you came up with a column which has the azimuth in there from zero degrees to somewhere like 360 degrees and you have a column with the corresponding altitude to it. We will come to that in a second but let's first go to Starry Night. So just to show you what's actually available and how they intend to do the custom horizon is if you go to options, other options and then local horizon then you can choose here a custom horizon. You see what's in there. By default, it's Earth and Mars. If I take Earth and say OK, it will look like this. See strange trees and a horizon line. Now, how they want you to change it is to go to Edit, Edit Custom Horizon, and then you could actually go to these yellow dots and do this. It's a nice gimmick, but definitely if you want to have an accurate horizon to use for your shooting planning, that's not going to fly. So let's try to do that better and for that we go back to Excel. So in principle, this should be enough, right? That's what Chad showed. And for Nina and for Stellarium, having two columns here is good enough. So why isn't it for Starry Night 8? Because out of whatever reason, the developers chose a very, very strange way of doing that. First of all, and that's the real funny one, when it comes to the azimuth, they just did it the opposite way around. So east is west and west is east. No clue why. So what I did, I entered here a column, 360 minus this, which gives, which just inverse the whole thing, and then it's correct. With the altitude, it gets even weirder. I don't know, they did not really use these numbers, but if you enter here about an altitude of 100, this results to a real altitude of 26 degrees. Again, do not ask me why. It makes absolutely no sense, but with trial and error, this is what I figured out. So I have here a calculation, which <laughs> puts the real altitude into the altitude that they want to have here. To make the whole thing worse, they don't just want to have the numbers, but they also want to have this text in front, not. So, but this Excel file does it all. So if you actually enter here your numbers, you get the output here, which is in a format that Starry Night 8 can read. So now the only thing you need to know is to where to put that. That's what I'm going to show you now. So I can only show it for the Mac and you have to find out if you have a PC, a similar thing on a PC. So if you go here on Starry Night 8, you say show package contents. It opens up. Now you're actually looking for resources 
In resources, you look for sky data, and in sky data, you look for horizons. And when you have done that, the horizon folder, that's where you need to be. So originally in here, you will only have two text files, Earth and Mars. So now just open the Earth file, and as soon as you want to edit something, it tells you you cannot do that, you have to duplicate it. So we're going to duplicating it, and we have to save that somewhere. Okay, now we have an Earth copy, which we can also name now, whatever you want to call it, whatever your place is. Let's say Chicago. Now what you see is that they actually have here these knots. And then they have it here again. And they seem to have two different horizons. And because I don't really get it, I just put the same thing on both. Then they also have here these trees. Now with the trees here, you have two options. You can do what I did. You simply delete it because, well, I don't really care about these trees. You can also leave it or you can even add more and afterwards with the editing function that I've shown you with the drag and drop, you can put the trees wherever you want to add it, but I don't really like them. So now having that done, we go back to Excel and we just sort the whole thing. Or by column F, by an azimuth, because it's now inverse so that we have the smallest on top again. Let's just sort it. So now it starts with the smallest azimuth. Let's copy this. So we go back now to our text editor file here and we simply paste it in here and paste it in here again. With that done, we're saving that and we have it now here. We might have to add a txt in the back. Okay, now we go back to our horizons folder and we just drop that here. We need to add our administrator password because we changed something in the application. We now have to completely restart Starry Night Aid. Okay, restart it. And now we go again to Options, Other Options, Local Horizon, Custom. And here you'll find now Chicago. And if you enter that and say OK, you see that we have our custom horizon. It's not looking very beautiful but it's accurate and that's the main thing here. And obviously we can do that now also in the night time. And so we nicely see where our horizon blocks us and where we have free sight. So I hope you were able to follow along and you have now your horizon in Starry Night 8 too. If you did succeed, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel below. See you next time, clear skies.